X-Men 97 Season 1, Episode 1 Thoughts. This episode's called To Me, My X-Men. Absolutely love this episode. Spoilers for everything X-Men leading up to including this episode. The show is rated TVPG, so this video will be, let's dive right in. So, yeah, from frame one, absolutely love the intro, which maintains a lot of elements from the original and adds in a couple new ones that really fit. Love the, the, the animation. I appreciate that they, they kept a lot of what was in the original and only updated it slightly. You know, it still very much has this comic booky feel, which, you know, there's a lot of animation today that really doesn't go for that. Uh, this There was a lot of fan service in this episode, but I felt like they balanced that with, like, storyline and strong character moments and such. And... Let's see. This is also, you know, by far the... <laughs> The MCU, up to this point, has not been that fond of bringing up and really confronting head-on social issues with the amount of honesty and kind of, yeah, just really, really facing it head-on as they do here. You know, Agents of S.H.I.E.L.D. also did a great job, but this is, like, on the level of the actual 90s cartoon that it's, you know, a sequel to, so fantastic love to see it like just the first couple of minutes of this episode really confront bigotry you know really really nicely done I, I had been a little bit worried that they were going to soften the blow because you know if you haven't watched in a little while I rewatched the entire 90s show all five seasons in preparation for for this show coming out it really, like, they they don't hold back at all. It, it, it is as mature and, and, like, unflinching as something with the age rating can be. And, yeah, you know, you have, like, Roberto straight up says, I was born like this, I didn't ask for this. And they still don't care, you know, and they even, he offered, you know, they, they still hate him. And, you know, he offers them money, they're, they're not interested, you know, they're, yeah, as, as we see in many cases in real life, their bigotry supersedes any kind of logic or any, you know, and, yeah, some, some really amazing action in this episode, and each character gets a really awesome moment in action, I quite like Storm giving them the chance to surrender, which, again, you know, there's a lot of cases in real life where bigots, you know, they're given the chance to, you know, yeah, cease violence, and, you know, it's, they, yeah, it, it comes down to having them arrested. Obviously not vigil, you know. Yeah, don't be a vigilante in real life. Violence should only be used to prevent greater violence. And they, they do a good job uh, showing the various characters' powers. This does work very well as, like, I tried to watch it thinking, how would this be for someone who hasn't watched, at least not all of, the old show? And in my opinion, you can absolutely watch this. This could easily be the first time, the, the first piece of X-Men you take in at all. It tells you everything that you really need to know. You know, yeah, it starts with us being told, you know, that Guy Rich got to, to Charles. We don't need to know who Charles was. They talk enough about what he represented for people. Which I also really appreciate. You know, the episode is in part about grieving. And let's see... And it is also a very cool idea, this thing of, you know, if, yeah, Master Mold was somehow rebuilt, you know, somehow Master Mold returned. And, yeah, parts of, of Sentinels were handed to these Friends of Humanity, and, yeah, they're, they're using that to, you know, you, you do sometimes see, 
you know, money behind, you know, small fascist organizations in real life as well. And, yeah, Morph posing as, as Charles and, you know, basically using Charles' fancy, schmancy words to basically just say, Scott, stop being a buzzkill. And I also, loving Scott so far on this show, you know, as I did on the 90s show, I don't know why. I, I do have faith that the MCU can do it, though, but none of the live-action movies completely got... Scott, like, he, they kind of, it's like if, if you, it, it's like they were written by people who read the books, and Scott was their least favorite character, it's like, ugh, this guy, he's just constantly talking about the rules, and so annoying, you know, and, and yeah, so far the show is nailing it as the 90s show did, and yeah, if you read the comics, if you, re you know, some of them I'll grant he comes across as kind of a stick in the mud, but if you read enough, you'll see there is more to him. And see, right. And I appreciate this thing of you know because of the the hit on Charles. Now we're seeing that there's actually a little bit more sympathy for uh, you know mutants, f and and that is you know sometimes there is a period of of at least slightly more sympathy for a minority after something really you know, really bad has happened, you know, it, it took the Holocaust before, you know, the, the, yeah, the Jewish people got their own, you know, their, their, yeah, their own state, and it's taken, you know, a, a very intense, you know, yeah, some some refer to it as genocidal, and and I'm not really seeing fault in their logic efforts by the IDF to get you know the the massive swell of empathy that there has after all been for the Palestinian people, you know, and and yeah, the episode brings up that's not gonna that kind of thing doesn't last. And yeah, perfect introduction to to Beast. This was an episode where there were several times where I was like, I know which character's coming up now. Which, you know, <clears throat> I'm not saying I'm some genius. That was clearly intentional. You know, some you know the the fascists, the Proud Boys stand in Friends of Humanity are like, why did it get cold all of a sudden? And you know, the yeah, it's like, yeah. Storm is is using her her powers. You've got the you know a, a wall blasts apart. Yeah, that's definitely Cyclops. You're hearing music and and like you know of of fancy voice humming along. Yeah, that's definitely Beast. And right, I I really love how Jubilee is sort of you know she's helping Roberto adjust to the idea she's basically because at the in the pilot of the original of the 90s show she was the one who was being attacked and and had to seek refuge and she also rejected them at first i quite enjoy using you know fairly early in the episode maybe a third of the way through magneto is used as this scary image of you know he's the enemy and then by the end of the episode he's like you belong to me my x-men and I also like, you know, Wolverine hears, oh, Roberto doesn't think the the um uh the, the danger room is is cool enough. Sure, I'll I'll show him something cool. And I do quite appreciate the the discussions about, you know, Scott and Jean considering leaving the X-Men and the talk about Scott used to be, you used to be cool, man. And Rogue watching people dance and is like, you know, I wouldn't be able to because of my powers. And and Jubilee dancing and using her, her powers there is also great. And yeah, I quite like, you know, so yeah, Scott is, is you know, telling Guy Rich, you know, you can accept this deal or else. And he's like, what are you going to do? Oh, no, my wife, you know my wife, 
and yeah, you know the the intensity of of Master Mold, you know, means she has to abandon it. And really, really cool when the the jet is taken out of the air, and there's the you know, air, yeah, mid air fight against a, a Sentinel and. All of and and I quite appreciate you know we're seeing teamwork the the flyers help the the ones who can't fly. Morph used their powers really well throughout this episode, and I love the zombie vibe when the the sentinels, you know they're like rising and parts of their their robot faces are missing. Love when you know. Wolverine goes to to cut off the the head and you know Gambit yeah Gambit charges up the the claws and he jumps onto um morphs you know they they shapeshift into I can't believe I'm blanking on that mutant's name but but yeah you know with the with blob you know and jumps up cuts off the head meanwhile Massimo is all like I finally sit down, just like he told me to. And let's see. Yeah, and the 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 last little bit of Roberto in the episode of him talking about, you know, he has to hide it from his family. He doesn't know how they're gonna take it, and he's basically, you know, I don't even want to be me. How am I supposed to, you know? It's it's basically talking about staying in the closet. You know, I'm I'm sure the LGBTQ plus community really related to that scene. So so very nicely done. There's always been, despite what grifters and chuds alike might say, there's always been the you know the X Men have been read as you know various minorities, but in, yeah, including the LGBTQ plus community for you know quite some decades now. Originally, it was probably more, uh, you know, people of color. I forget, I, I want to say it, I read somewhere there was either the 70s or 80s that they started being read as LGBTQ+. And, you know, there was a storyline that dealt with AIDS. And yeah, the episode ends with, you know, intruder alert. And Magneto says, you know, here's, here's his will. It's not just my word. Charles left the the X Men to to me, you know, which I do appreciate because it is like you know, it's not like he left them to like Mister Sinister or you know, Apocalypse or something, you know. Magneto does have some integrity and morals, so yeah, I'm I'm really looking forward to seeing his leadership, and and there's definitely gonna be you know his, his leader snip snails. There's definitely gonna be some friction between him and and the X-Men. But yeah, absolutely love this one and going to go watch the second one just yeah, um very shortly and do my video on that one. So catch you then.